Welcome to this um, interview we are holding uh, with the mayor of Srinagar, uh, Mr. Junaid Mattu. Mr. Mattu um, has turned out to be an indefatigable uh, warrior against the coronavirus. Um, and uh, he and his team of administrators have done some remarkable work in Srinagar. So much so that Srinagar is one of the districts uh, which has been held out as an example uh, for most other districts in the country on, on the best practices to follow on how to handle uh, this entire crisis. Uh, thank you for joining us, Junaid, and welcome to the ORF's, uh, this interview with the ORF. Uh, and thanks a lot for joining in. So if I might ask you the first thank question, which is that, uh, you know, you were among uh, one of the first uh, responders when this whole corona crisis kind of pandemic kind of broke out. Um, in fact, you were very much ahead of the curve. You had started taking certain decisions even before uh, the rest of the country was waking up to this virus. So can you fill us in um, on how, uh, you know, you started sounding the alarm bells and how you started responding first? Uh, I think you're right. Uh, we, we were uh, one of the first, if not the first city in the country uh, to call a special session of the council and order a lockdown of uh, you know, educational institutions, public markets, flea markets. Uh, and at that time, it was, uh, you know, uh, perhaps a decision which, which was viewed with a lot of uh, speculation, cynicism, skepticism, uh, because that is how bureaucracy works in, in, in our part of the world. Uh, but the very fact that we started early gave us a lot of advantages that other cities and corporations per se did not have. Uh, you know, uh, when, when we are asked today about our state of uh, alertness and our state of uh, you know, preparedness and why we can per se procure the machines and chemicals that other cities can't. The simple reason is that we started a month and a half ago. Uh, you know, I remember we started perhaps around the time when the uh, Namaste Trump event was happening. And there was absolutely no talk of, uh, you know, India as a country taking certain decisions. So that helped us. How we started is that we started defining the lockdown first. We issued instructions for the closure of flea markets, uh, open air markets, all vulnerable hotspots, coaching centers, educational institutions, colleges, and then very strongly advocated the closure of public transport. I wrote to the Honorable Lieutenant Governor and sought the closure of public transport. Uh, and, and these are things that had have helped Srinagar. Uh, and quite ironically, the day that we, you know, announced the lockdown in Srinagar, there were voices from the bureaucracy which came out and said that, you know, uh, there is absolutely no need. Uh, and behind closed doors, the whispers were that the mayor has gone mad. And, you know, there's something happening in Wuhan. Why do we need to shut our schools? Uh, but but we persisted. But, but, but that's understandable because, uh, you know, the schools and other institutions had started opening after a month's long lockdown. So I think the bureaucracy probably felt that, you know, they've just gone through one lockdown and to impose another lockdown. Uh, perhaps I think that was where they were coming from. But yes, please carry on. Well, I, I doubt it. That was not entirely uh, where they were coming from. Uh, the fact of the matter is, and I'll be, I mean, I've always been very candid and that's been one of my uh, flaws in politics, is that a pandemic is a, you know, a pandemic deserves a systematic scientific response. Uh, a pandemic uh, doesn't care for our administrative procedures and formalities and red tape. Uh, it needs an economic response. It needs a medical response. It needs a disaster management plan. Uh, and do I think that we were a little late? Uh, I would have probably liked ideally to be at least a week earlier than we were. Uh, but I'm very happy that Srinagar started, uh, you know, we were much ahead of the curve. And, and that is helping us. That is showing visible results. As you rightly said, the Honorable Prime Minister has included Srinagar as one of the uh, districts, the cities in the country, one of the 16 in the country to share its best practices with other cities. So. Uh, you know, I, I think that is something uh, to, to, to rejoice in because Srinagar and our uh, former state and now Union Territory has normally uh, never been seen to be leading from the front when it comes to governance. And that in a lot of ways created a, uh, you know, all pervasive cynicism in institutions of governance. So if we 
in this instance, we've changed that. I think that, that that's uh, tremendous. So, uh, so Junaid, uh, the next question which would follow is that, you know, like in most parts of the country, the health infrastructure has been creaking. You know, very little investment has been made in the public sector health infrastructure. Uh, and then suddenly you are hit by a virus which nobody has ever seen. Um, so did you, uh, how, how were you affected by the limitations of the health infrastructure in your work and um, about this whole uh, business of, you know, uh, getting the testing kits, uh, setting up quarantine facilities, uh, you know, just walk us through how you managed, uh, you know, all those shortages, uh, which, which, which have affected many parts of the uh, country otherwise. Well, our health infrastructure is shoddy. It's grossly inadequate. There's absolutely no denying that. You know, we talk about the chest diseases hospital, which is at the center of the uh, you know, response in Sri Lanka. It was made by the British in 1880. Uh, the SMHS hospital was made in 1947. Uh, the, you know, the, these are hospitals that uh, uh, you know, uh, were started in the pre-independence era. Uh, we have not invested. The country as such has not invested in healthcare as much as it should. We spend a very meager percentage of our GDP uh, on healthcare. But Srinagar is probably one of the, uh, you know, states which comes last in, in overall rankings in the amount that we've invested in our healthcare. So the first presumption that we started with is that prevention is our only option. If we allow this battle to go to our hospitals, we're doomed. So the, 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 the only option we have is to defeat this on the streets and prevent a community uh. transmission. If we reach uh, a community spread stage, a stage three, uh, then uh, we will not uh, probably be as comfortable as other states. You know, it, it, it's quite, um, you know, it's, it's out in the media that we have 70 to 80 odd ventilators. You know, they might say 90 or 100 ventilators for the entire Kashmir Valley. Uh, so these are matters of concern. Uh, now, testing kits, you know, I am of the firm opinion that lockdown is an adjunct interim measure. Lockdown and isolation is not a solution. Lockdown can give you a scope and a window to test more and go out and seek the virus rather than the virus seeking you. Um, now, we have examples of states like Andhra Pradesh buying the rapid testing kits from the South Korean companies. Uh, for the first month, ICMR did not approve rapid testing. Again, that was this old typical approach, a bureaucratic approach that, you know, let's see if it's good. The entire world is doing it, but should we approve it? We wasted some very precious time and now rapid testing kits are harder to get than they were probably 20 days ago. So I am of the firm opinion that we should buy rapid testing kits and we should increase our tests per million. We should test everybody in the red zones. Uh, and I have publicly advocated that. Uh, but as of now, I think as far as Kashmir is concerned, Srinagar is concerned, they're trying to rake up the testing capacity from 300 tests a day to 1,000 plus tests a day. I still think that is not enough. And I think uh, you, we, we have two options now, either pool testing or rapid testing. So, so uh, Junaid, you know, you are um, in a place which many people sometimes uh, categorize as a conflict zone. Uh, you know, we can't turn our eyes away from the challenges which you otherwise in any case face um, in, in, in Kashmir. Uh, but tell me, you know, there's been a lot of propaganda, especially by the Pakistanis, that of medical shortages, medical supplies being very short, um, how, that people dying of hunger, uh, that, you know, all sorts of lurid stories are coming out of Pakistan. Uh, can, can you... Tell us what exactly the ground situation is in terms of medical supplies, in terms of uh, food shortages, in terms of uh, all the other stuff. Uh, how are you handling that part of what is happening? Well, Pakistan should start by stopping shelling across the line of control. Uh, you know, uh, that's where it should start. Uh, we, we're losing precious lives in shelling. We just lost a young little child uh, in, in Kupwara and shelling. Heart-trending images of a mother holding a dead uh, young son. Uh, Pakistan has no business in uh, analyzing our response. They should focus on what they are doing in their own country. Uh, there are challenges. There's absolutely no doubt about it. The most advanced systems, countries, and health infrastructures in the world have caved in. Uh, I still believe we are doing far better than the United States, for example. Uh, 
as far as uh, food distribution and logistics are concerned, uh, one of the saving graces is that we have a very uh, dynamic uh, DC in Srinagar uh, who, who isn't defined by the red tape that surrounds him. He's proactive, uh, operates very comfortably outside his jurisdictional bubble uh, and has a level of exposure, has a level of exposure that probably you know, enables him to take these decisions. So we have now uh, started, uh, I was being told that uh, we've started both door delivery, area-wise locality deliveries of uh, vegetables. Uh, we are starting household deliveries of ration uh, medicines, but these are challenges. These challenges will exist. For Pakistan to say that it's all grim here and to turn somehow a medical crisis into a human rights uh, situation is what they do best. Uh, I am just surprised that they find the time to do that at this uh, situation. The first thing they should do is stop ceasefire violations on the line of control so that that isn't a distraction from what is being fought. So, so Junaid, uh, the next question which I wanted to ask you was that, um, you know, one is hearing from the ground up that uh, suddenly within the community, there is a lot of appreciation for the kind of work the administration is doing in Srinagar in particular, but also in other parts of uh, the Jammu and Kashmir uh, Union Territory. Uh, as a political person, uh, how do you see the community response? How do you see the society's response uh, to what is very clearly a tough time for not just people in Jammu and Kashmir, but I think people in the country? Uh, because many of the other uh, you know, kind of restrictions which have been there. Uh, to that, something more has been added in terms of social distancing. Uh, how are you, uh, you know, seeing the situation unfold? How are you, what are the kind of responses you are getting from the ground up? You know, the, the, the skepticism and cynicism that the mainstream invites traditionally in a place like Kashmir, uh, yes, there is a political sentiment. I won't deny that. Uh, but it's grossly accentuated and exacerbated uh, by the fact that the mainstream collectively has failed to deliver on basic governance standards and uh, mechanisms. Healthcare infrastructure is one of them. Uh, we have one of the worst uh, ICU bed to population, million population ratio in the entire country, probably even worse than Jharkhand, states and union territories which have started now. Uh, but a very welcome shift has been and, uh, you know, I noticed this with a lot of pride uh, that uh, a lot of people, especially the young people in Srinagar are coming forward uh, independent of their political differences and ideologies and probably uh, appreciating what is being done. And more importantly, investing faith in the administration, which is a rarity, which is very rare in a place like Kashmir for young people to invest, invest faith in the administration, to, to follow its directives. Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, I, I, I was on Twitter and I, I put out this tweet and you know said that please tweet your favorite picture of Srinagar. Let's remember the city we love in so that we can yeah. remember what we are trying to protect. Uh, and, and I said, let's use it with hashtag one Srinagar. Within an hour or two, it was trending uh, across the country. Uh, and, and if you look at the young people who were doing it. And there were some very awesome pictures uh, which were being... It, it was such a lovely... It does envy you guys actually. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of people got reminded of the beautiful city that they live in. And this is what we are trying to protect. And the surprise is, this is what I was noticing. I saw people with Twitter bios which said that, you know, we live in Indian occupied Kashmir or we live this here or people with profile pictures with the Mirwais. But they were tweeting it. They were tweeting with the hashtag one Srinagar and they were appreciating what is being done in Srinagar. And I think uh, that is something yeah. to cherish and build up on in a place like Kashmir. Absolutely. Uh, so, which brings me to the next uh, question, which is about something which has, you know, been a matter of controversy for very long, which is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the shutdown of the 3G and 4G services, uh, you know, very limited broadband ability, uh, uh, which is available. Uh, number one, this internet shutdown, how much does this impact upon uh, your ability to reach out to people or to deliver services or to connect with people, um, you know, and how much do you think this is impacting upon 
uh, how you uh, intend to fight this entire corona virus thing add to this this whole issue about fake news about uh, you know this propaganda coming from uh, pakistani handles and other uh, such uh, despicable characters uh, you know so it's it's a kind of a, a toxic mixture also which comes in uh, once you open the internet what would be your take on how uh, the authorities need to go about this i i i think the benefits not just in this situation the benefits per se uh, of restoration of high speed internet far outweigh the costs and the costs being fake news and propaganda i think a leap of faith has to be taken i think it was a great missed opportunity when people young people were demanding the restoration of 4g to help them with their online classes to help them reach out and research about what needs to be done the overarching demand was not political this time generally it's political i think somewhere somebody some officer in delhi has misled the higher ups and told them we should not do it it was an enormous opportunity for the state to reach out and tell the people that yes this is not political it's about an epidemic we want you to attend your online classes and we are restoring 4g there are mechanisms to fight fake news there are mechanisms to fight propaganda uh, throwing out high speed internet lock stock and barrel is not a mechanism that we can sustain uh, it's a failed uh, and and a very counterproductive issue i think it was a great missed opportunity had it been done a month ago the amount of goodwill and credibility that it would have generated especially among the young men and women in srinagar or kashmir per se would have been huge is it impeding our efforts yes uh, possibly the extent of uh, impact might be exaggerated for example uh, the lieutenant governor has written to me yesterday to constitute a committee in srinagar with representation from various sections educationists and healthcare and virologists Uh, and i don't want to have physical meetings with them because a lot of them are you know of an age and with comorbidities that i would not want them to move out and i just spoke to a few of them and we are trying to now install some high speed internet at their places so we can have video conferencing uh, so these are challenges we face uh, video conferencing per se is a challenge so in 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 times of physical distancing uh, lack of the medium of high speed internet is absolutely a problem i have repeatedly appealed uh, to the central government that this is the time to reach out and restore high speed internet take a leap of faith there will be people who misuse it but are you telling me there is one single city in the country where people don't use misuse internet probably it's it's, it's misused more in metropolitans than it can be ever misused in a, a city like srinagar or a place like kashmir but a leap of faith has to be taken and i think internet needs to be restored without any further delay great thank you so much uh, we know uh, the kind of personal sacrifices you and uh, you know your entire administrative team is making uh, we see that on twitter you go back home after a week two weeks at times uh, so it's a remarkable job you all are doing i haven't doing. been home i haven't been home in the last uh, I, i think this is the 21st day that i've uh, been home i haven't seen my child or my wife since 21 days now yeah but it's a remarkable job you guys are doing thank you very much thank, thank you for this interview and we'll keep coming back to you uh, next time with some more provocative uh, stuff to talk about uh, thank you and uh, you know your candidness as always uh, hope to get uh, you know have you uh, back with us very soon again thank you so much junaid thanks a lot thank you thank you